It's not that happy a Christmas for our nation's shopkeepers. Wages are falling, unemployment growing, but prices too are meant to fall. We're meant to become more competitive, we export more and eventually are tempted back into the shops and the long-awaited virtuous cycle begins. But if there's any blockage to this process, the consequences are stark. I was a uh, server of forfeiture notice. Uh, it's a two-week notice and basically they want me out of here on Friday. As things stand at the present time, another day older and deeper in debt. We cannot pay the rent, arrears are building up, and each day I'm here, I'm you know, increasing those arrears. Our rents increased in the Irish market between 2000 and 2007 by 240%. At the same time, prices went up by 30%. All the industry wants is a decision from the government as to what they're going to do about upward only rent reviews retrospectively. Uh, we need a decision. The whole uh, property investment market has been in limbo land and paralysis since they announced it in the programme for government. Retailers may be tied into leases with their landlords of 15, 20 or even 35 years. These leases ensure that a landlord cannot throw them out of their premises if he gets an offer of better rent, but it also ties the tenant into five-year rent reviews, which can only send the rent one way, upwards. The law has been changed so that a new lease cannot contain an upwards-only clause, but that is of no use whatever to existing businesses who are tied into existing leases with rents often set at the peak of the boom. The people who need the help are us, existing traders, existing tenants. Anyone starting now has the benefit of market rents rates. They're down. People are being let into empty units here for, you know, considerably reduced rent. It's the existing traders who are experiencing the difficulties. Retailer Bernard McEntee has two units in the Square shopping centre in Tyler County, Dublin, a beautician's and a news agency. There are five yearly rent reviews up here, and the last one took effect from October 2005. And I think uh, the increase was of the order of 30-odd percent, 33, 34 percent. The recession started to bite, business fell off, turnover has fallen here by almost 30% from 2007, 2008 to 2010. We've managed to cut costs, we have reduced staff, we've reduced the wage bill, um, we've tried to boost business as much as possible. Things we don't have any control over are the rents. David Carey, who runs Carey Menswear at the Omni Centre in Santry, North Dublin, with the assistance of his brother Paul, is in even more dire straits. I got a rent increase in October 2006 of 30% roughly. Um, my business start, uh, there was a downturn in my business from 2008 and since I got my rent increase, uh, my business has been down between 40 and 45%. Uh, the rent I'm paying at the moment, if my business continues to go down, it's unsustainable. And the retail industry claims that this situation is commonplace. In a study of rent versus sales by the industry from 2009 until now, shops reported a reduction in sales of 30% over the period, but an average reduction in rent of only 3.4% over the same period. If viable businesses are being driven to the wall by rents far above what could be attracted in the free market, that is a serious concern for the economy as a whole. Our system of property leases may be destroying thousands of jobs. We have, between the two shops, maybe 20 people employed. Last year we paid in excess of 360,000 in wages. Put that on top of that, I reckon we put a half a million into the economy. Now. If our shops are closed, that half million is gone and potentially the state could have to pay, what, 200,000 a year in social welfare, other allowances? So you're talking about 700,000 of a difference. We are looking for a rent reduction of the order of 50 to 60, 50 odd thousand between the two shops. Does that make sense? There's one small thing that's crippling a whole industry, Ireland's largest industry. Um, it, there's a fallout for everyone. For the business owner, they lose everything. For the employee, they lose their job. For the customer, they are bereft of choice and, and ultimately prices, uh, price competitiveness will be removed from the market. There's only one winner as it currently stands and that's the landlord. Of course, the biggest landlord by far is our beloved National Asset Management Agency. In a letter sent to the then Minister of Finance, the late Brian Lenehan in November 2009, released under the Freedom of Information Act, NAMA made clear its attitude to banning upward-only clauses in existing leases. 
Any such legislation would cause a dramatic reduction in the value of the income-producing assets transferred to NAMA, said the chief executive Brendan McDonough. Loans being transferred to NAMA had been assessed and valued on the assumption that existing contractual lease terms prevail, and such a change in the law would mean that NAMA would have effectively overpaid for bank assets, he said. There are any number of reasons why landlords might refuse a rent reduction. They may simply feel that on the fixed rent gamble they won and now is the time to collect. But much more importantly, the value of commercial property is based on the rent it generates. And it's been suggested that some landlords may even prefer to have empty units than to concede a rent reduction with the inevitable knock-on effect that that has on the value of their property and perhaps even the solvency of their companies. If they reduce rent for one, the perception is that that's the new market rent and everybody will potentially enjoy it. So thus there's a dampening down of the, of the rent value or the yield from the asset. Additionally, we value assets primarily on a multiple of yield. So if the rent is maintained at Celtic Tiber levels, we can multiply that by 20, 30 times and that's the asset value. Obviously if the yield reduces and the multiplication effect will reduce the asset value. You know, you have good landlords, you have bad landlords, you have good tenants, you have bad tenants. Um, you, I think it's a combination of their banks probably putting pressure on them. Um, and some simply just won't engage. The current plan to deal with upward-only rent clauses is much more modest, involving compulsory mediation, followed if necessary by a court hearing at which retailers would have to prove that they are at risk of closure. But crucially, it still seems to involve retrospectively changing existing contracts. You seem to be saying to me on one moment, um, we have to find a solution, and almost in the next breath saying there isn't a solution. I've, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, I probably am saying that because, you know, it, it, because legally if this, th this solution that is proposed at the moment is unconstitutional, I don't know what else we can do because if, if retrospective legislation is unconstitutional, then we can't have it and the market has to operate freely and landlords and tenants have to engage. Um, and we can't force landlords and tenants to engage, so what do we do? We've got our own advice and indeed the AG previously advised on this matter and didn't have those difficulties. But if there is, there's ways and means. We have insolvency laws in this country. Let's introduce an examinership light approach, an ombudsman or a court where you go with your lease, you say this is the rent I'm paying, this is the market rent, I'm vulnerable, here's my profit and loss account, here's the people I've had to let go please make a judgment and maybe use that as a mechanism to, to reduce rent. But one way or another, rent is going to reduce. It'll either reduce through legislation or through business failure. Of course, however bizarre the concept of upward-only rent reviews might seem now, retailers freely entered into those agreements when they signed their leases. But in a crisis that has turned financial and political institutions on their heads, it would seem strange if we couldn't change a part of our legal system that may be costing us tens of thousands of jobs. Yeah.